All right, guys, the year is 2023 and potentially even further if you're watching this video in the future. And the knife industry as a whole kind of sucks. I'm not going to lie, especially seeing this past year's SHOT Show and really seeing, you know, kind of what do I say, like the lack of innovation, I don't know. It does get disappointing at some point when you look at some companies and they're ultimately just releasing the same knife that they released five years ago, but in a whole bunch of different colors, right? So today I wanna to do a video kind of talking about instead of giving into the peer pressure to buy new knives in fancy new steels or essentially just going with the same old design in a different color, here are some old knives and older knife designs that are still being made to this day, minus this guy right here, at least for now being made, that you can get in this year. And they're time-tested, old-school designs that just work. So we're gonna go from least expensive to most expensive, starting now. All right, so I'm kind of confused at like, Okay, so I'm not 100% sure whether these two are cheaper or these two are cheaper, but the Emerson prices seem to ebb and flow. So we're gonna say that these two are cheaper. So starting off with, actually, better yet, we can go with the Griptilian because I know that this is probably the cheapest one on the list. <laughs> so the Benchmade 550 Griptilian. Now this guy, there has been many a rumor that is being discontinued and it might be well on the chopping block, which I personally think is a very large shame. The Griptilian to me is what Benchmade is you know this is what made bench made and it's such a classic timeless workhorse of a knife that it's so hard to go wrong with and personally my favorite one is the 550 if you're going with the full sized or the 555 if you're going for the mini version and that is essentially the one with the spidey hole and the sheep's footed blade i think they call this like a reverse tanto or something technically but this is a, a sheep's footed blade in the purest sense of sheep's foot so this guy is very hard to go wrong with whether you're looking for just a general duty knife a tactical knife or really anything in between as i fail to flick it correctly uh, this is just a really well-rounded blade that of course with that spidey hole you can spidey flick it and of course you have your awesome access lock and i will say I do personally lean towards the 154 CM blades. These are no longer the ones that are being made. They're now standard issue with S30V, but the 154 CM takes a wicked edge and is still perfectly fine. So yeah, that is the Benchmade 550 Griptilian or 555 Mini Grip. All right, now let's talk about the Spider Co's. So this one is a limited edition, so technically this one's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but your standard basic plain Jane paramilitary two with black G10 and an S30V blade is going to be around 130 to $150. And this is honestly just one knife that outside of this list, if you don't have a paramilitary two and you do want a really nice EDC blade, even if you do already have a few, I think that the Spider Co paramilitary is like ridiculously hard to go wrong with from its very nice compression lock making one hand opening and closing a breeze to its very generous spidey hole allowing you to flick it to its really good like it has a very great general purpose blade shape so even if this isn't you know a knife that you're checking out because it's old school cool it's still totally worth checking out and it's been out for over 10 years now but the paramilitary 2 is still an incredibly righteous and worthy blade to pick now, next to it, in a blade that's been out pretty much just as long, is the Spyderco Manix 2. And this is the Manix 2 here. Now, once again, mine is a little bit different. This one is an S10V. So mine is kind of a sleeper, if you will, because it does have that plain Jane G10 and plain Jane blade except for the fact that it's s110v so this one is technically a little bit special but if you look at it especially when it's closed and you don't look at the blade steel if you look at it like on this side you would totally think that this blade is just your average stock manix 2 until you see that s110v and you realize it's not quite so this is kind of my sleeper blade if you will but the standard stock basic manix 2 will run you about i would say i think i want to say about 160 bucks these tend to run a little bit more than the paramilitary twos the coolest thing i will say and this is something that you genuinely have to look if you are on the knife forums you know search for good deals but both of these blades because there's so many paramilitary twos and manix twos out there especially if you're looking for just a plain jane 
uh, black G10 with the S30V blade, you can find them for around $120 on secondary. So if you look out, they're not as easy to find anymore for 120 bucks, but you can find them for good deals still. And for me, in my opinion, the Manix 2 holds a lot of the properties of the paramilitary 2 in its general purpose, good utilitarian kind of design and such, and awesome ergonomics, I will say. Like, it has tons of grip, tons of position to hold it you can choke up on it you know get up on that tip and such so it has a lot of usability to it but um, ultimately yeah it's a really hard one to go wrong with so next one up sorry don't let me touch the expensive ones yet <laughs> are gonna be the Emersons now Emerson in my opinion and I'm so happy that a handful of other smaller YouTube channels have been mentioning Emerson here of late because I feel like Emerson is so slept on nowadays back when I was first coming up in the knife world Emerson was all the rage and everyone talked about Emerson knives right but um yeah, so these guys are not as heavily talked about, nor are they, you know, like as popular as they used to be, but the Emerson knives are really cool. The ones I have here to show are the Horseman, the Mini CQC8, and of course my beloved Minicom or Mini Commander. And I personally love my Minicom the most, though the Horseman is slightly cheaper. Both of these are kind of in a weird position. You can find them on secondary uh, only only in really blade forms. As of late, Emerson changed their model that they only sell new direct to customers. So if you do want to buy a brand new Emerson Minicom or a Horseman or anything else, a CQC7, anything like that, you do have to buy it directly from them. And that is subject to availability and of course full MSRP because you are only able to buy directly from them. So if you want to pay uh, top dollar to get brand new Emersons, you're gonna have to go straight to Emerson. But even still, when it comes down to it, you can usually find these guys on their website for about $200 even. So it's again, slightly more expensive than your Spider Co's, but not too bad. Now these guys personally, on the secondary, they can go anywhere from like $260 down to $160. So they're a little bit questionable in the secondary where their pricing will be, but you can usually find them for pretty good deals on the secondary market. So long as you don't go on eBay, don't go on eBay to buy an Emerson. Terrible financial advice. You'll get a real one probably, but it will cost you an arm and a leg. All right, now let's jump into the two more expensive ones. So first off, we'll go with the XM18 by Hinder. Now, despite all the claims of heat treat and lack of customer service, I've personally always been treated really well with uh, QC or customer service from uh, Hinder, I should say. They are really good. They've always taken care of me quite nicely. So I really like my Hinderers, but this is an XM18 three inch, and uh, there is a three and a half inch as well. I just didn't pull mine out for this video. Video, but these are really hard to go wrong with. This is an older generation as noted that it does not have the, um, what is it? The kind of, it does not have the more modern pivot system that I believe is on bearings, but this guy is still plenty smooth, not quite drop shut. Kind of got to give it a little bit of a flick, but it is pretty darn smooth overall. But overall, uh, yeah, these, uh, these Emerson XM, Emerson. These Ender XM18s are pretty good. They're pretty old school and they're pretty cool. Now, these guys will run you the small versions, the three and a half inch versions, or sorry, the three inch versions will run you about 350 to $400. The three and a half inch versions will run you around 400 to $500, if not sometimes more, depending on which exact version you're going for. Something that's like this, an ACU camo with just G10 and, you know, like a pretty, pretty basic stone washed finish on the uh, lock bar side and on the blade will probably run you closer to like 350 of course full titanium will be more expensive so anyways that is the hinder xm18 last up is the one that is officially no longer made this is the one that is pretty much to my knowledge the only one on this list that is no longer made and that is the chris reeve knives Sebenza, large Sebenza 21. Now they do make the 31 and sometimes in my opinion, depending on how crazy like knife prices are, I have actually seen a few of the new Sebenza 31 
31s in magna cut going for like $400. Now granted, those are plain Janes with the standard drop point uh, blade shape. And once again, there's like nothing too crazy about it, but to see a large Sebenza 31 in magna cut going for $450 to $500 is pretty darn good, especially considering that that is the newest generation. However, these Sebenza 21s go for reliably the large ones tend to go for about 450 to 500 dollars because they are yesteryear's technology but these things are still totally fine they're still in my opinion the gold standard of what i measure a quality high-end knife off of and as i flip it around in my hand so many different companies have ultimately copied this from grismo to shirogorov so many people in the high-end knife industry have copied chris reeves um, homework and that is not necessarily a bad thing and that's not necessarily a knock against those companies just that that is kind of the grandfather to the high-end knife industry so it's really hard to go wrong with you can usually find them like I said, especially if you're willing to find one that's in a little bit rougher shape. Mine's in pretty good shape because I take care of it. But if you find one that's in a little bit rougher shape that you're willing to put some TLC into, you can usually find them for pretty good prices, sometimes into the $300 range. And for me, so long as the damage isn't too grievous, I wouldn't actually mind or I wouldn't tell someone to not buy a, a kind of beater Sebenza because Sebenzas are the types of knives that they're so high quality that you can genuinely restore them, breathe some new life into them, put a new edge on them so long as you know what you're doing and really breathe new life into this blade. Like this is a blade that you are actually gonna be able to restore and it's gonna look actually sometimes better than factory depending on how you restore it. Whereas, you know, someone thrashes and trashes something like a Manix 2 or especially like a Griptilian, I'd probably say, you know, don't go for it because they're already such inexpensive knives that, you know, the components and quality and materials aren't really gonna be worth restoring. Whereas this with its full titanium, uh, you know, handle and such, it's going to be worth restoring and uh, yeah. So anyways, that's kind of my opinion on it. And ultimately, hopefully that gives you guys an idea of a handful of knives that you can buy in this year or like in this kind of age where there's not a lot of new promising blades. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.